All right, everybody. Bear with me as I get this into the camera mount. All right, I think we're good. How's everybody doing today? Well, I'm doing all right. Thank you for asking. So here's what we've got. It's not a new brand, but it, it's a new brand to my channel. Um, I've never played with one of them before, so I've been very curious because I definitely like the look of it and heard good things. So let's go ahead and see what it's about. And then we're gonna compare it to some of the other ones I would put in its category. So this is a company called Vosteed. Mm -hmm. uh, this model is, although it doesn't say it here, is the Raccoon. And they've had the button lock version for a while. I'm not a fan of button lock knives, um, I'll be honest. And it, it really comes down to the knife itself. To me, I just don't think they're as secure. I've seen a few of them, you know, from knife makers that, you know, you'd say that's a good knife. It's a reputable brand. Um, but if you do the back lock test, or don't do this with your hand like here, but you smack it on a piece of wood or death, I've seen them unlock. Um, also, if you take one like uh, my CR, CJRB Pyrite, which I love from a flicky, really nice action EDC, very lightweight, kind of minimalist, sort of like a Benchmade bug out, but you know, little heavier but also less than half the price the problem i have with button locks is that especially when they're really proud like that and they're kind of like right where you might you know if you're taking your time and you're doing delicate cuts it's one thing but if you had to really jam on this or you're in an emergency situation where you weren't quite you know thinking about what you were doing as far as holding it but you were doing whatever you needed to do in that kind of a rough situation it's very easy for my thumb to hit that and unlock it and you see it wiggling but if I shift my grip up, if my thumb slips up, anything like that, it's very easy to unlock without that pronounced. Some do a better cutout and it's deeper and more recessed. And because the knife handle is bigger, you can, uh, you have to make more of a pronounced movement and kind of go. So this is great for, you know, maybe people with small hands and it's great for a fidget device. And I guess for normal little things, it's probably okay. But if I was going to use it for something hard, I'm just like, I don't trust the button lock as much as I trust an axis lock um, a liner lock, a frame lock. All right, well, right out of the box, speaking of box, um, let's take a look at Vosteed. This is a really nice, I, I don't know how to describe this, it's a very soft, almost rubberized texture. Um, huh, that's really cool. I don't know if that's supposed to come apart. I guess that's what it does. Yeah, it pops open. Um, wow, <laughs> that's a really nice box. This is on a on a knife that cost me a the princely sum of uh, how much? This was fifty nine dollars on Amazon. So all right, let's take a look at the knife. Let's get into it. I mean, we talked about other stuff before I even got into this. Really nice. Okay, I don't know what the patch is for, but some people like patches. So I don't know. You got a patch. You got a little coupon or some kind of a. I don't know what that is. Uh, let's see, business cards for support, warranty, little Vosteed uh, microfiber. Yeah, I mean, nice little case. And then it's got this, which also has Velcro. I guess you can collect, connect that to uh, a Molly or something like that on your Tactical vest. I would say of the um, the pouches, it's definitely one nice. I mean, this is really nice. I, again, I don't know how to. I don't know if the camera's really picking up on all this, but this is a really, really nice packaging. Not that that matters. The knife is what matters. But for $59, you're getting a really nice little case. Um, I kind of like that high contrast there. So I went for the... They've got a bunch of different uh, variations of it. You can get it with the button lock or their crossbar lock. Ooh, that's nice action. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> We're gonna like this knife a lot, I can tell already. Let me just wipe a little bit of the oil off of it. So I went with the Micarta, but they've got G10, they've got um, stone wash blades, black wash, and then they've got button locks and different color handles and things like that. So there's a few different combinations. Um, so the Raccoon is using 14C28N, so perfectly good, stainless, everyday, um, holds a decent edge. It's corrosion resistant pretty well, um, easy to sharpen. A nice blade shape, but right out of the box, the action's really nice. I believe this is on ball bearings. It is, I said it's the Sandvik 14C28N. 
Um, they're claiming a rock wall hardness of 60 plus or minus 2. So 58 to 62, right where you, I guess you'd want that. The weight is 3 ounces, 3.04. So it's going to be heavier than a bug out, but it's going to be kind of right in line with some of these others, pretty dang close. Uh, the pocket clip is reversible. It's a deep-ish carry. It's not a true deep carry, so I won't be able to give it uh, extra points for that. I, I do like having that, you know, on the uh, CGRB, having it really deep. So, you know, that one's going to be not quite as deep. has a lanyard hole. Don't care for it, um, but all the knives seem to have them. Um, I do like that it is reversible. If you are a lefty and it has a plate there, so you're not just... Uh, having a uh, an empty spot, but it's cut down into that channel, which helps it with the wiggling left and right if those screws loosen up. Even when the screws are tight, I've seen a lot of knives that it still lets it wiggle. That kind of locks it right in place. You know, the metal flexes a little bit, but that's that's really nice. You've got, um, feels like a G10 kind of uh, backspacer in there. All the stuff looks pretty good. Blade centering. Pretty much perfect. To my eyes, that looks pretty goddamn good. Action's really sweet out of the box. Um, like a lot of Axis locks, that blade drops freely, and so you almost have to time it when you let that in because it's going to bounce. But that's, I mean, for brand new, that is right out of the box. No blade wiggle up and down, left or right. Really nice high grind. Oh, this is a high grind, saber grind. Um, but super high grind on that, almost up to the top. Really nice drop point. Um, you've got a finger choil, although it's not as pronounced as, you know, well, that one doesn't have one. I should have grabbed the native or one of the other ones. Um, but I guess this one, you know, you've got that finger choil you can choke up on. But you can there too. That's, and, it, and it works well as a sharpening choil. You'll be able to get right to that edge without hitting anything. Thumb studs on both sides. Um, on this, can you reverse flick? I guess you probably have to practice it. You have to hold it in such a way that your finger isn't up here where it's going to hit your, uh, your thumb studs. But then also, you don't want to drag on that. So you can do it, but you'll have to sit there and dick around with it a little bit. I'm not as much of a fan of the, the, the reverse flick. On certain knives, you know, they're designed and they really lend themselves to that. I'm not going to do it just to do it if it, if it makes more sense because that's the way the knife was designed. I guess it's all right. Um, really nice usable blade shape. Um, we gave the specs before, but they seem right exactly where they said they would be. Your cutting edge is just shy of three inches. So that to me is kind of your sweet spot. I've got bigger and I've got smaller knives, but lately the knives that I've been carrying, not this one so much, just, I love it. I just wish if they did a crossbar version of this with Micarta, uh, that'd be probably one of the best EDCs out there rivaling the bug out because you'd be able to come in at half the price and it would be just as good. Um, but I've been carrying like my little cold steel tough light because that again is very small, but it's a beefy little knife. Got a really strong point and good for cuts and, and whatever you got to do and you're not going to lose your grip on it. And it's $30. Um, I've been carrying this one a lot. Um, my Elementum, I don't carry as much because it just doesn't fit my hand, but this kind of reminded me with the blade shape. So I thought I brought it out. I've been carrying a bug out a lot. I think that's probably one of the best EDCs of all time. But this is going to be right there in that same sort of size, right around that three and a quarter inch blade with around a three inch cutting edge. The handle's a little bit bigger. It's not going to be a featherweight the way the uh, bug out is. That's 1.8 something ounces. This is three. So it's uh, not quite double the weight, but it's, you know, it's a good, it's 80%. It's, it's 180%. So it's it's up there, um, but it's still three three ounces. Three ounces is a fairly light knife. Um, the steel inside is milled. If I can get the right angle there, you can see they've drilled out the steel plate. So for its size, you look at it and you're like, it's kind of thick. It, it looks like it'd be a little bit beefy, but it really isn't. I mean, it weighs, it's a little more than an Elementum, but it's not much more than an Elementum. It really is right in that sort of, uh, oh, this one's pretty light. This one's really light. It's gonna be out more here. Size-wise compared to a Kaiser K1. Right in that size range. So this is kind of my perfect EDC size. I like this a lot. I love the axis lock. Um, I like liner locks, but that it takes more, more movements to, to lock it, unlock, to, to unlock it, and then close it. Whereas here, you can open it with the lock, and then just let gravity do its work. 
So really nice, smooth action, a little bit of jimping. I'll say the jimping's there. It's not super aggressive. It won't ever, you won't be in risk of chewing up your finger, but it also doesn't give a ton of grip. It's a little bit. I would say, you know, obviously something like the Spyderco with that ramp. This jimping's a little bit more functional. I don't think that has any. This is a little bit more functional. So I'll give, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'll give that jimping a, a 6. It's there. It checks the box. The finger choil doesn't look as much like a finger choil, but it actually does work pretty dang well. Um, you will have, it's not as deep, so you can, you have to be careful if your finger did run up on that. You could run up on the edge, but it's fairly generous. I think you can get in there unless you're being a Muppet. Um, this should be a great slicer. Let's go find a sheet of paper. Let's see how she slices out of the box before I strop it. Yeah. Pretty damn sharp. Push test, think it'll do it? Yeah. It's not doing the best push test I've ever done, but it's actually not bad. I'll give that a quick strop and just tune that edge up just a little bit, but I'm not going to have to actually do any sharpening on it. I like the Micarta. That's a nice knife. I like that a lot. Uh, I got, I'm going to the Blade Show in Atlanta tomorrow, so luckily living in Atlanta, I have easy access to the International Blade Show. So I'm going to ride down there on a motorcycle in the morning, my backpack and stuff see what I can find and what might be interesting to come back and review for the channel. God, that action is crazy on that K1. You just barely, as soon as it overcomes that detent, just boom. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll be at the Blade Show tomorrow and then I'm going to go riding and stuff. And then we'll have an episode of Dave's Garage on Sunday. Cameron's bringing a Z900 over. We're doing flushing coolant, flush, doing oil change, I think, brakes. Um, a whole bunch of stuff on his bike. So we'll uh, we'll do a video of that. So celebrating Pride Month, we'll have uh, Cameron in studio. Um, he can share his experiences and what Pride Month means to him. And uh, we'll do some motorcycle stuff. But uh, for now, it's all about the Raccoon. That's a really nice EDC. That's going to make it high into my rotation. It's just big enough for me to get a grip on without being excessive. It's just chunky enough for my big hands to get a firm purchase. Well, I say this is one of the best EDCs of all time. It's really skinny. I mean, I'm really having to like cramp my hand to kind of get, a, a, and it wants to turn in my hand because it's just so thin. I think if you got small hands, it's a much better fit. While it fits lengthwise in my hand, it's so skinny. So this being just a tiny bit longer, but just a little bit thicker, it just gives you a little bit more to hang on to if you were to use this uh, in a more serious manner. Um, but I'm definitely liking it. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit it with the strop real quick and just take any little last minute burrs off the edge, although it certainly seems to cut fine. And uh, that's going to make it up high in my rotation. I would see the three knives that I've been carrying the most lately, up until now, have been the Benchmade. I've been carrying my little my little Delica. I think it's perfect. And this guy, something about it. It's just it's it's small, but it's just beefy. It's light. This is just a really strong lock. It's a really thick blade. It's a really just good utilitarian pocket knife. But I'm going to have this one in my pocket. I love the shape of that blade. It's got a decent stabby point. It's going to be great for slicing, food prep, any of that kind of stuff. Um, that high grind is just going to be effortless slicing through things. That's a really, really nice setup. It said something in there about an adjustable crossbar lock. I don't know what that means. I'll have to look up what that means. Um, I'm not really sure how that's adjustable. But the action, I mean, just look at that. Out of the box, just tilt it like gravity. Grab it and dunk. Really nice. I can only imagine that's just going to break in even nicer over time. So there you have it. That's the Raccoon. Um, new to the brand. They're made in China, but they seem to have a really great reputation. You can get them on Amazon. I'll throw a link in there. Pick one up. That's a nice little addition. It's just a that little bit. You know what I've been saying about the the, the uh, Civivi Elementum is it's one of my favorite EDC designs. Just the aesthetic, the drop point blade, the construction, how they do it. I think it's one of my favorite EDC designs of all time, up there with things like the Bug Out and the Delica. But for me, it just isn't quite big enough. To get my hand here, that point goes into the, that knuckle, and it just it doesn't gel with my hand. They make the 3.5-inch size, which does fit my hand, but they've only offered it so far in a button lock. At the show, I'm going to see. Maybe they've come out with a new version. If I can get one like this that's a flipper and a liner lock 
and doesn't have the button design, I mean, sign me up. That will probably be my favorite EDC of all time. But this I wanted to get because it seemed to be all the things I love about the Elementum, the nice construction, that perfect EDC size right in that three-ish inch blade length, Micarta, the same price point. They're, with dollar, they're within a dollar of each other. But it gives me just that extra, and it uses the right lock. Otherwise, I'd be carrying an Elementum 3.5 inch. If I can find one that's a liner lock, that'll probably be my go-to. But if you're like me, and this is just a little too small for your hands, you're feeling like you got to pinch it to keep it from digging into your knuckles. I mean, look at the construction. Look at the, the shape. It's There are similarities here. That's a really nice knife. I am going to enjoy carrying this. Anyway, that's enough for today. Stay tuned for whatever I come up with at Blade Show. Will I get one nice $400 knife? Will I get a bunch of value knives? I don't know. I'm going to go there and see what I find and come home with what I come home with, and then I'm going to go ride. So we'll talk to you guys later. i got to get this thing out of the damn... Uh, out of the cradle.